It's my third time in Cardiff and I almost feel like home already, so it's about homes or the lack of homes that I'm about to speak. But before I start, just a kind reminder that uh, I'm not a professional speaker, am I an, uh, neither am I a native English speaker. For that reason I have this small aid and I have a bigger one in my back pocket if I need it. Uh, I will take you for a short time, time run during my professional working life and we start from, from the year 1954. Actually it was the year that I was born. Uh, at that time the last shelter in Helsinki operated in bomb shelters was closed. There was a serious lack of housing after the Second World War. And you can imagine the grim irony for the men returning from war front ending up living in bomb shelters in peacetime. So shelters have a very long history in, in Finland. In 1984 I had been worked, working already for a few years for the city of Helsinki and every winter we had the same problem. We had to find emergency accommodation when it got cold for, for homeless people. And you can imagine, only the imagination was the limit, what kind of facilities were offered to us working for the, for the city. I remember that there was a policy jail and people said that, well, homeless people already know it, so it's a kind of safe place for them. And then there was an unused morgue that was offered. And then there was a turpin hall of a waste power plant on the condition that the machines would be fenced and protected from, from the homeless people before it was used. And actually this one was used for some, some winters. Then in 84, I got, I got a job to make a, to start building a shelter for homeless people. And that, that is actually this was the only one that the city of Helsinki ever made. And we were very happy because we thought that this is the top quality because there were only two beds in the same room for, for 80 men, two, two beds and a fridge so that they didn't have to hang their foodware out, out from the window. And at that, that time it was the top quality and it was meant to be a temporary solution. But as it often happens with temporary solutions for homelessness, it, it stayed as a temporary for over 20 years before it was demolished. And at that time, it was the worst place that you could imagine that homeless people preferred to sleep rough if this was the only solution that was offered to them. This is a little bit embarrassing, but you are only <laughs> young only once. It was in 86 that I with two of my colleagues, we went to a study visit to London for one week to learn how you take care of homeless people in, in the big world. We saw a lot of shelters, hostels, a lot of people sleeping rough, soup kitchens, and a day center. And actually the day center was the only thing that we took with us back to Finland. So I have not always been working with homelessness. I worked almost 20 years in doing research evaluation and consulting on social health and employment issues. And whatever the apparent problem seemed to be, there always was the core problem was that people from different organizations and different professions didn't work together. That seemed to be the, the, the main problem. And I wrote hundreds of pages of reports, but it was very difficult to see the results of your work. So when a little over 10 years ago, when I returned back to homelessness issues, there were two things that I had, I had learned. The other one was that if you want to get results, you really have to work together. The other one was that shelter is not the solution. Uh, in Finland, we had already had several national programs to reduce long-term long homeless, hom homelessness at all. But in 2008, we made a real transformation in the national policy, uh, a real paradigm shift. We started a national program to reduce long-term homelessness with the aim to end it completely. And I had the possibility to work as a secretary in the working group that made the 
proposal for, for the principles of this policy and also worked as a program leader for five years in that program. And we adopted two things. First, we implemented the housing first principle as we understood it. And then also at the same time, we started the renovation and conversion of the shelters and hostels into supported housing. These two elements combined a systemic transformation of the Finnish homelessness system. Uh, homelessness, as Neil already mentioned, homelessness has been rising in recent years in most European countries. There are estimates that there are at least seven, 700,000 homeless people in Europe. Although the European Union knows better the amount of cows in the European Union than the amount of homeless people in the European Union at the moment. Uh, but Finland has had a little bit different development. Uh, already for seven years homelessness has been going down in Finland. Since 2008 the number of homelessness ha has halved the total number of homeless people and also we have now less than 1,000 long-term homeless people. It's very difficult to find people sleeping rough rough in Helsinki, you really have to do some digging to, to find them because the amount is so small at the moment. And also shelters and hostels, they have been completely renovated, transformed into independent housing. So there's actually only one shelter or, or emergency place with 52 bed places at the moment in, in Helsinki. So it has been a rather encouraging development. So if you think about why there is homelessness, some say that there's always homeless people, but I don't agree. I don't think that it's inevitable that we have homelessness. I think that it's a social issue that can be solved. And, and it's a result of conscious politics. It's, it's the failed housing policy combined with austerity measures in many countries that resulti have resulted in the catastrophe that we are now seeing people even dying on the streets in many European cities. So the remedy for homelessness is rather simple. You can describe in a few sentences. Housing is a basic human right and a civilized society takes care of its members. And housing first is an excellent way to do it. So why has it not spread around the globe? I think that one of the key reasons is that you can't have housing first without having housing first. This is, the, this is the explanation that I most often hear in many places that we, of course, we would upscale housing first, but we, we don't have the housing available. So there are obvious reasons, but of course, you can also find solutions for them. And for us, it has meant that we have provided different kind of housing. There's, no, there's, there's not only one solution how you can provide the housing. It's not only scattered housing. There are people who say that, who are a little bit orthodox, that it has to be scattered housing. But I think that we may have in housing first thinking also a little bit too individualistic view because there are a lot of long-term long homeless people, especially who fear the isolation and loneliness that you can experience in your scattered housing flat. And for that reason, we need to have other housing options. And this is an example that we have in Helsinki, or actually this one is in Espoo. So it's a building where we have 33 apartments, in the complete individual apartments, and you can have your own rental contract there. You can live on your own, or you can take part in the common activities if you prefer. But there's also on-site staff to provide the support if that's needed. And this transformation of the working of Salvation Army, that has been one of the miracles in the, in the Finnish system, because they are now one of the most progressive organizations, <coughs> providing a lot of work rehabilitation, or, for example, for, for their tenants. But there's also a wider issue of housing, and it's what we call in Finland affordable social housing. I think it's what you call more social rent in, in UK. Uh, this is my favorite example because it's a social housing building which part of it is reserved for low-income rock musicians. And believe me, there are a lot of those in Finland. <laughs> not, <laughs> not everyone is a, is a big star. And when we 
open it, we got over 1,000 applications for, for this building, these flats. And now we are building another one in another place. So I would say that there are some obvious and some imagined obstacles for ending homelessness. And this lack of generally affordable housing is, of course, one of them. But it's a result of conscious politics and it can be remedied by conscious politics if there's a will to do that. Lack of prevention is, of course, one of the big issues because it, it's always better if you act in time to prevent people from dropping into homelessness. But actually affordable housing is one of the main structural measures to prevent homelessness. Uh, in our thinking, we sometimes have too much complexity. Uh, people ov often say that homeless people have complex needs. That, that may be true, but the solutions to these complex needs can sometimes be rather simple. As housing is the foundation for a living, why not start by providing a home and then start solving the other issues? But of course, we have to be honest that there's also some resistance from the homelessness sector, especially shelter organizations. People are, there are a lot of workplaces at stake and people fear of, of, the, of the change. And I think that in some countries, this is probably the, the most <coughs> important obstacle. Attitudes towards homelessness, always the old stereotype image and, and saying that it's their own fault, which is not necessarily true. Uh, lack of political will, which is the same as lack of courage. But you, can, you have to understand that there are two kinds of political will. There's a political will, which I called media-inflated political will, which means that politicians are happy when they make a declaration that we will end homelessness. But then there's the other pol political will that leads to action. As you can see, I didn't put the lack of money because that's not really the issue. If I read right, Prime Minister Johnson a few days ago said that they will put over 300 million pounds to end homelessness. Just so, just like that, suddenly 300 million appears. So I just hope that they use that money wisely. Advice provided if needed. So, a couple of weeks ago, I took part in a United Nations Social Development Committee's se special session on homelessness and affordable housing. I hope I got <laughs> it right. <laughs> Which meant that there was a huge gathering, uh, representatives from member states sitting for two weeks making a resolution on homelessness and affordable housing. And these are the verbs that were used in the resolution at least at the draft that I saw. My favorite is this noting with concern. So I may be an impatient pragmatist, but I'm afraid that there's too much talk and not enough action to, to really end homelessness. I just wonder how long will it take before this resolution in the member states leads to action and, and and, and real, real things for the, for the homeless people. Uh, because the homeless people can't wait too long. But for us, the situation is a little bit different. And I'm happy and proud to say that the, the long process that started over 30 years ago is now reaching its culmination point because we have a government now that has decided that within the next four years, the rest of the homelessness would be halved and then completely ended by 2027. Uh, and you have to understand that in these numbers, we have also the people uh, living temporary with friends and relatives. It's the main part of the Finnish homeless population is people living temporary with friends and relatives, so for surfers. So the actual number of people in temporary accommodation is, is very low. I also know the time that remains for me. I have 25 months, if, if health permits, in my, in my job before retirement. 
And I actually know what can be our contribution to this goal, because I know that during this time we will buy around 200 flats for homeless people. That's something that the Foundation has been doing for over, the over 30 years. So we have a housing stock of 6,000 individual flats for homeless people and 10,000 flats for, for affordable social housing. And also we will build probably 600 social housing flats. It takes approximately 14 months to build a social housing building, building in Finland. So this is what's st still left for me. But of course, after retirement, there's uh, plenty of time for, for civil activism also for me, because I think that to end homelessness, we need the effort of the states, we need the effort of the local councils, local municipalities, we need the effort of NGOs, but there's also uh, uh, very much need for targeted civil activism. So uh, I, have, I have been happy to be involved in this process in, in, man, in many parts. And what, ha what I have learned from, from all this is that uh, what, uh, whatever you achieve in your working life, you achieve it together with other people. And actually, we are for the other people on this, on this planet. Otherwise, without other people, it would be a rather lonely journey on this planet. As described by a Danish poet, Ivan Mal Malinowski, when he wrote that to learn to go with head high in the nearness of death, to stay alive in the constantly renewed awe and loneliness like a migrant bird alone above, above the sea, under the darkening sky. So, oops, almost forgot one thing, the picture about this London visit. Uh, in a two weeks, we are going to have a group visiting from London, people from the Greater London Authority who are responsible for solving the rough sleeping issue in, in, in London. And guess what? They are coming for a study visit. Thank you. <laughs>